this is a normal distribution sum. The weights of bags of popcorns are normally distributed with mean of 200 gram and there is a probability given. So first of all, in question number A, write down the median weight of the bags of popcorn. We know a normal distribution is symmetric. Mean, mode, median are equal. So the median weight would be equal to 200 gram, same as the mean. Question number B. Now in question number B, what we have over here, the information that we have is the mean. So normal distribution has a mean, which is 200 grams, and a variance, but the variance is not given. So what we have to do, we have to find the variance, what we call the normal distribution type 2 sums. And here the probability is given. So the probability that we have over here is given probability of all bags weighing between 190 grams and 210 grams is 60 percent. So this information is given. So the first thing we have to do, let's convert into unit free normal distribution known as the standard normal distribution. So this is going to be, let's use the Z score. So let me remind you how the z-score looks like. So the z-score is random variable minus mean divided by sigma, standard deviation. So this is going to be 190 minus mean is 200 divided by sigma, which is unknown. And 210 minus 200 divided by sigma, this is unknown. So this is 60%. So this turns out to be minus 10 by sigma and this is going to be 10 by sigma okay now in order to do this uh, it's a good idea always to have a diagram in front of you so do you have an idea what it looks like so this is what it looks like so if we draw a standard normal distribution we know this is symmetric, so 60% is going to be at the middle, exactly at the middle. So this is going to be 60%. So the whole thing is 60%. Now if this is 60% and there is this zero mark at the middle, so this is going to be 30%, that means 0.3, and the other side is also going to be 30%. Now we know that half of the normal distribution is 50%. And this portion is 30%. So that means if we have this as 30% and this as 50%, so the whole thing is going to be 80%. 50% plus 30% is 80%. So we can write, therefore, probability of Z is less than, so either side, if we consider this to be, uh, minus a and this to be plus a so either way if we consider this to be a so that is going to be z is less than this side 10 by alpha and this is going to be 80 percent so let's use some sort of a substitution over here it will make the sum easier so let 10 by sigma equals to a so probability of z is less than a is 80 percent in order to find the random variable and the probability is known it's better to use the second table so if you take a look at the normal distribution table this table has random variable on one side and the probability on the other side but the next table has probabilities given so the difference is this table is a greater than table instead of a cumulative table so what we can do over here, we can convert it into greater than. So 1 minus probability of Z is greater than A equals to 0.8. That turns out to be 1 minus 0.8 probability of Z is greater than A. Therefore, probability of Z is greater than A equals to 0 0.2. So we can look up that table. So when the probability is 2, the random variable is 0.8416. So, we can write, therefore, A equals to 0.8416. The sum is not yet done because we have to find the value of sigma. Hence, so 10 by sigma equals to A, which is 8416. 
Therefore, if we send this to this side, 0.8416, and the sigma to the other side, therefore, sigma equals to, let's use the calculator, 10 divided by 0.8416. And that turns out to be 11.88. 11.88. They didn't mention how many decimal places. Let me use some more. 2, 1. 2, 1. Now, what if uh, we did not use the second normal distribution table? What if we use the cumulative normal distribution table? What would happen in that case? Let's check. So let's continue the sum from here. So suppose we have this portion. So alternate method. So what we have is probability of z is less than a equals to 0.8. So let's use the main table. So here z is given and here the value of probability is given. So if we look up the probability close to 0.8, so what we get here is 0.7995, that is the closest. And for 0.7995, the value of z is 0.84. So what we can do is therefore a equals to 0.84. Now notice, previously we got 0.8416, which is pretty more, accu more accurate than this one. So let's see whether the value of sigma matters that much or not. So 10 divided by sigma equals to 0.84, divided by sigma equals to 10 divided by 0.84, which turns out to be 10 divided by 0.84. It's 11.904, 11.905. So they are not exactly the same. So that's, that's what I suggest. It is important that you do this one. You find the value of Z from the second table. So please remember that. Let's move on. Now the final part is, a shopkeeper finds that customers will complain if their bag of popcorn weighs less than 180 grams. Find the probability that the customer will complain. That means, find the probability it's less than 80 grams. So this is going to be probability of X is less than 180 grams. We have to find this probability. So for the standard normal distribution table, so what we have, probability of Z is less than 180 minus mean is 200 divided by sigma. We now know what sigma is. It is 11.8821. We are using the more accurate value. And this turns out to be probability of Z is less than. So 180 minus 200 divided by 11.8821 and that turns out to be minus 1.68 minus 1.68 so when we write this we write this as a greater than because when you change the inequality when you reverse it the negative becomes positive now it has to be cumulative so it means 1 minus for cumulative because the table is cumulative so let's look up the table so here we are 1.68 so this is it so 1.68 so what we have to do so we have to find the probability and it is 0.9535 so 0.9535 and when we subtract it from 1 1 minus 0.9535 and we get 0 0.0465. Now let's take a look at the examiner's report. After everyone takes the exam, the examiners uh, goes over the papers and give their statistical analysis of uh, how did the performance go. So here what they mentioned is most candidates knew that mean equal to median for normal distribution and wrote down the correct value. Others obtained this by calculating this. So that's, that was not necessary. So this is something important. Now in part B, many were able to illustrate a correct probability statement on a diagram. That means 
The probability statement on a diagram is important. You have to draw the diagram. And most knew how to standardize, meaning the z-score. But the key was the to identify the statement that it is 0.8. So remember, in the diagram, using the symmetry concept, we converted the 60% into less than 0.8. That is something very, very important. And another important part was using the second table. Remember, there are two tables. One, they're calling it the large table, and the other uh, one is the small table, the next one. So that was another suggestion they're giving. And they said, yeah, but this enabled them to score all the marks except for B1. Meaning, uh, you lose some mark, but it doesn't mean that you're going to lose all the mark. And part C, most people were able to score for standardizing it. So that was not a problem at all. As usual, the candidate's use of the notation connected with the normal distribution was poor. That means you have to know the notations, when to use x, when to use the z-score, and how to change the distribution and the diagram. These are very, very important.